Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you exactly why Jim Jordan, along with the indictment itself, will acquit, dismiss, or have the pace, the, the conviction overturned on appeal. Bragg conceded they used federal funds in Trump indictment. And so they're using federal funds. They're using federal funds in Trump's indictment while at the same time, while at the same time, listen to this, there is no FEC violation. So they are the federal, the, the state prosecutors, the state prosecutors are jumping into the realm of the federal government. Mr. Bragg has conceded that he used federal funds. This is Jim Jordan in, in many articles, but I'm looking at a Washington Examiner article, and <clears throat> the federal funds... <clears throat> This is Jim Jordan, quote, well, for, well, overall, it's ridiculous. I mean, first of all, Mr. Bragg has conceded that he used federal funds. We know this grew out of the federal, the special counsel investigation, which is a federal statute and most importantly involves a, uh, um, the FEC. I mean, here, here we are, as you indicated, four months away from the first debate in the primaries for the most important office. You're utilizing federal funds for an indictment that relies on a federal crime that didn't take place. <laughs> okay, so Jim Jordan is front and center here in preventing any conviction. Think about that for a second. The federal government has allowed, or I mean, he can, I guess if it's a federal crime, he can use the Manhattan District Attorney can use federal funding to go after somebody, but there wasn't a, the FEC did not go after Trump. The FEC did fund, did, did fine Clinton and the DNC for purchasing the Steele dossier with campaign money. Okay? And the 2016, we're still living within 2016, so... Think about this again, ladies and gentlemen. Think about this again. This is very interesting. Fox News. Bragg conceded they used federal funds in Trump indictment. Jim Jordan. Okay. Today, there's an article. The Trump indictment is a legal embarrassment. National Review has an article. Bragg's indictment even fails as an indictment. They are so desperate to go after Trump that they've accused him of 34 felonies that are actually misdemeanors in the state of New York that rely on a federal crime that hasn't been committed for those misdemeanors to be elevated and boosted to felonies. Jim Jordan is going to ask, did you have any contact with the Ready for Hillary Super PAC? Because Michael Avenatti when he was running for president as lawyer for Stormy Daniels, was working with Ready for Hillary and a whole bunch of Clinton advisors. And I think Hillary Clinton will be the 24 nominee for the Democratic Party. It'll be Trump, Hillary again. We have not left 2016. I'm like a hologram from 2016, okay? 2016 should have shaped everyone's political viewpoint forever. Unfortunately, what, what happened with the morally superior Democratic Party is they said, oh my God, we lost to Trump. It had to be because of another country. It had to be because of, you know, base emotions that he um, compelled people to have. Uh, it, it couldn't have been, Democrats couldn't have looked in the mirror and say, oh, we, we cheated Bernie Sanders. And we push endless wars, just like the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld people. Oh, that's why they want people want Trump. It couldn't be that. It had to have been Trump as a menace and a monster. So who are the narcissists? Not Trump. The people who couldn't accept reality and the, re and the actual reasons why they lost. But anyway, 
Hit subscribe to this channel right now. Read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, other publications. And go to hagoodman.com. Um, become part of a newsletter there and read the, the, the writing. And um, to my super thanks, thank you. To, the, uh, to my Patreons, thank you. It's below, the links are below. The super thanks is below next to the like and the share buttons. To my new Patreons, thank you so very, very much. He's using, it's not, it's not Jim Jordan and the House Judiciary. It's not Jim Jordan and the House Judiciary that is interfering in a state prosecution. It is a state prosecution that's relying on the federal government to actually make it a felony to where Trump, you know, can go to prison. Okay. <clears throat> you have Hunter. Joe's son, in pictures and videos, <clears throat> with narcotics, with uh, committing, you know, doing things that can be viewed as um, doing things legal, but perhaps the overall setting is not entirely legal. Then you have financial crimes that are listed within those emails. Serious financial crimes where foreign policy, could there be a link between an invasion in Europe and the fact that Biden is president? That is a question that I'm not, I'm not saying there's a direct link. But you better believe they would ask that question if Trump was in office. It would be, oh my God, this is categorical proof that everything we accuse Trump of is true. Look what's taking place. Oh my God, they twisted that into, well, could you imagine if Trump was in office and we had that invasion in Europe? It's like, well, yeah, exactly. You'd have to imagine that because he wasn't, that never happened with Trump. But they were they impeached Biden because Trump tried to pressure a country to look into Biden. And then we found out through his emails, through Hunter's emails, that, oh yeah, there was a whole bunch, endless, shady, corrupt transactions that even were deemed suspicious by financial institutions and banks. Not one business transaction deemed suspicious by Trump, aside from something that the FEC didn't view to be even a fine. But you have one Democrat in Congress saying, we proved that they always use these words in the most hilarious manner. It's like, you didn't prove, you didn't debunk, you didn't do anything. It's like, you just offer a rebuttal and you say, that's it, it's categorical, uh, End of story, period. That's it. They say, we proved that that there was no quid pro quo. You didn't even have, during the first impeachment, Hunter's laptop. You didn't even have the laptop that the New York Post reported on that was promptly censored in silence. I mean, you have to ask yourself, what political side tries to censor? What political side? And then they say, oh, tr you know, DeSantis is an authoritarian. Uh, he's trying to ban books. It's like, well, um, there is certain literature that you cannot read in certain locations. We'll leave it at that. So they twist everything. It's unbelievable. But who, who, is, who, is, the, who is the side? What's the political side that's banning political speech? Not speech that is so offensive that it wouldn't be, you know, allowed on any platform, really. I'm talking about political speech or so provocative or whatever. Political speech. Who's, who's suspending or censoring or silencing an actual publication? Twitter. How, how many hundreds of 200 plus thousand Republican accounts were suspended? And the one thing the morally superior Democrats got from the Twitter files is, well, you know, Trump had a, a thin skin. Like, what? Did you not realize that hundreds of, th where were the hundreds of thousands of Democratic Party accounts suspended? Oh, that's right. That would never happen. So you have a situation where there were a great many political influences, whether it's ready for Hillary or whether, whether it's book deals or whether it's people surrounding the Clintons, the DNC, and public record knowledge of them with Michael Avenatti or even with Stormy Daniels. If Alvin Bragg used federal funds, he's relying on a federal crime that hasn't been committed. He needs to explain if 
He was influenced by the Democratic Party, according to Jim Jordan, he needs to explain. According to Jim Jordan. Thank you. Hit subscribe right now.